Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's 100% Fall Out That's New Vegas. That's the way out after you break into the Sierra Madre's vault. Try to leave. I'll set off your collar. Okay, bud, relax. I'm just trying to explore, try to leave, and boom. Man, who had time to write that, I wonder? Traveled on the Mojave Wasteland requires key. Yeah, once you enter this DLC, there is no leaving, ladies and gentlemen. We have a Sierra Madre chip there. We have a Cosmic Knife there. Um, we want to find all of those that we possibly can. Uh, I don't know about the Cosmic, the Cosmic Knife, but there are upgrades to the Cosmic Knife, as many people have already mentioned. Uh, this is going to be a little tri- Okay. This is going to be a little tricky to find everything uh, in this DLC. Uh, there, okay, so the unique challenge that presents itself with this DLC is that you need to get everything basically that you want to get before you leave, uh, which is probably why, why I will be live streaming this, most likely, uh, to clean up everything before we leave. It's the only DLC where you have to do that, so to make sure that I do that, uh, and if you want to watch that live, you know, me cleaning up everything that we want to find here, make sure to follow my Twitch channel. Link is in the description below. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 4 to 9 p.m. Mountain Time, and it might be a bonus stream. You know, I'll, I'll tweet it out and everything like that, so just, you know, make sure you follow all my socials and blah, blah, blah if you want to make sure to catch the stream if we do some cleanup for this, uh, series. Anyways, uh, here's a bunch of Sierra Madre chips, which we're going to go ahead and start off by grabbing. Uh, they're usually found in these little fountains. As you can see here, and yes, I know, I know, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, GV, don't forget the ones in the center. Oh, of course, yeah, we got a ton of them here, as well as an Ace of Spades, Sierra Madre, there's an enemy. Dead Man's Hand, one out of five, collected Sierra Madre, okay, we got, we, this thing also comes with a lot of different challenges, doesn't that thing pop up? Yeah, that's so cool, look at that, like, pops up, speak with Father Elijah, no thanks, he's rather, um... Rather rude. I prefer not to, to be honest. Okay, we're gonna grab all these little Sierra Madre chips. I think you need quite a lot of them, so this might not even be worth it. But you can see in the top left, we have a challenge to collect these chips anyway, so we'll do it. Um, there is a woman showing up in the middle, as we mentioned last time. I'm actually not sure who... Ah, uh, that's not true. I think I do know who she is. Okay, uh, we have a vending machine here, which we can trade those chips in for. Uh, you can see we can get recipes. Uh, they cost different Sierra Madre chips to the right over there. Uh, we have eight. A doctor's bag costs 55, so you can see it's not the, uh, not the most cheap things in the world. And let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Let's take a look at our quests. We have three. Fine Collar 8, Dog. Fine Collar 14, Dean Domino. Fine Collar 12, Christine. Uh, as Father Elijah said, he wanted us to start with Dog. So that is who we're going to start with. Um, I'm not sure if it actually is better to go for somebody else, but, uh, I'm going to go to, you know, I'm going to go for what this game gives us in terms of direction. Uh, let's take a look at the local map. Where are we headed to? All the way over here. Uh, world map. Oh, okay, we do get a world map for the, um actual DLC itself. So we need to go to the police station. You can see there's lots of different locations here. And also, uh, everything has been taken away from us, um, which is again why I didn't hotkey anything in the last episode. Uh, we have an explosive collar. Let's take a look at our apparel and our weapons real quick. We have a cosmic knife, which we will hotkey. Where did I put my melee weapons? Uh, we'll do it down there, I guess. And then we have a hollow rifle with not that many microfusion cells. Effects, hollow rifle damage. Now, fun fact, I did a little research on as to what are some good energy weapons, you know, so that we can get our hands on something decent? The hollow rifle apparently is one of the best, if not the best, which I didn't realize because, again, I never really used energy weapons in any playthrough. So, yeah, you get this automatically. Uh, Father Elijah gave this to us, uh, so that's quite interesting now, isn't it? We have the dead money collar. We have the dead money jumpsuit with repair plus five as an effect. We have an em <laughs> NCR emergency radio. I, think, I don't think that's going to help us much. All right, so let's be on our way. Uh, here is the hollow rifle. Uh, you can see it's kind of like a Gauss cannon. Unfortunately for us, there is no sneaking through this, which really sucks. In fact, in fact, yeah, man, now that we don't have sneak, this is going to be pretty hard, I think. Um, we have, uh, we're, we'll try to grab all of the little locations, too. We have the medical district there. Yeah, I just realized. Treasure's mine, assholes. 
God, I don't know about you all, but if I was, like, thrust into this situation, I wouldn't really care about the treasure. I mean, if it seemed doable, sure, but, like, I would probably be more worried of the fact that I'm in this horrible situation. Don't go through the gate to Puesta del Sol yet. Gather the others first. Okay, relax, buddy. I'm just grabbing the location, so that goes to, yeah, Puesta del Sol, which I guess is leads up to the main casino. Not entirely sure. We don't have too much ammo here, so I'm a little worried, to be honest. We have a door. Lots of little things that you can find, which, like I said, I'll most likely clean up um, post the DLC. As long as, long as we don't actually leave. I don't think there's any issue with uh, find me and we can talk. Well, tch. give us some direction, bud. Who are you and where are you? Anyways, as long as we don't uh, leave the DLC, we should be able to clean up everything. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Ooh, whiskey. Okay. Going to take all these chips, of course. Because I'm pretty hungry. Haha, <laughs> get it? Haha. <laughs> okay, and uh, yeah, we've got an enemy up ahead. And unfortunately, I always play sneak characters when I do this. Ooh, got a handprint there. And a Dean Secret stash here. Neat. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're only going to take what we need. There's a reason for that. We're not going to take that stuff. So Dean Secret stash, 1 out of 15. So there's 15 Dean's Secret stashes. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for those, obviously. We're going to search the garbage cans just in case um, we find anything that we can utilize. Uh, okay, so we have... What is that? A spear? A knife spear. Oh, right. That's a new weapon. Lots of new weapons added with this DLC also, of course, including the hollow rifle that we're Watch using. Watch out for the villa inhabitants. They're difficult to kill unless you chop them apart. If you can, blow them up or disintegrate them. Okay, so this is mainly the reason I did not want to play this when it first came out. These guys creep the ever-loving hell out of me. Um, we can't search them, because guess what? They come back alive, so we're, we're just going to keep moving. I tried to use stealth there, and obviously we got found out almost immediately. Already? Is he back up? Yeah, I think he is. All right, we need to keep moving. Uh, I do. I cannot afford to waste all of the ammo on these dudes because it's waste. You know, it is wasting it unless you disintegrate them. Uh, we have a terminal here, hologram control terminal one. Activate hologram. I don't know what that does, but sure. This guy here. I don't know if that's actually going to do anything. We're going to keep moving though. Goodbye. Um. Oh god, that's so creepy. It's still creeping me out, man. Even, even this later on oh looks like is he disintegrating i don't know i'm not gonna stick around and find out um you know what? we are gonna try to sneak a little bit so at least if we're not in their line of sight they won't really pursue me okay so we're trying to get to the police station uh remember there's weapons there and i'll try to use the pip boy light when i can but it's gonna uh, it's mainly because of youtube you know making the videos darker but i don't want to be found out either <laughs> That is the cloud. Remember Elijah talking about the cloud? Well, there you go. That's where all of your data is stored. Isn't that a funny joke? All right, we're going to hold off on that. Like I said, we'll, we'll do most of the exploration most likely in a Twitch stream. Also, there's a bell going off, so keep that in mind. Okay, looks like we're good. So far, so good. Uh, let's grab all of these chips. Uh, the thing is, I don't remember if these chips are the same as what you get for gambling. If they are, this is worthless, because we're there's an unmarked quest uh, for the gambling in this in this area that we're going to have to do anyways, which means we're going to get tons of caps or these chips or whatever it is. Um, I don't know if you get the chips from gambling or if you just get caps, so I'm just going to take these anyways. But here we go. That's the police station right there. No chips in that one. That's sad. Okay, so here's the police station. Find God in the simplest of beasts, which is a quote from something, not sure what. But here's the Villa Police Station. Let's make a new save. Kind of on edge with this DLC. It makes me scared like a little scared boy. Well, let's head inside. Interfere with the bomb caller frequency and can trigger the detonators prematurely. Hmm. It is an unfortunate side effect, one I did not anticipate. I was unable to calibrate the callers to block the signals. So, you'll have to make do. Okay, so we already know this. Radio signals will mess things up. There is a radio right there. It's 
we're gonna shoot and destroy it. Now, again, unfortunately, this uses a little bit of ammo each time, and we don't even have another weapon to be able to shoot anything, do we, at the moment? Nope, all we have is a knife spear and a cosmic knife. Now, the knife, if the knife spear, if you can actually throw that, I don't actually know if you can, I don't remember, uh, we might be able to destroy that. What do we have here? Vending machine code steady. Okay, so that's another thing that we're gonna have to find is all of the vending machine codes. That's okay, bud. We'll be with you in just a second. Search the basement of the police station for a way to free dog from his cell. A free dog? What about three dog? <laughs> we have a police pistol there. Ooh, perfect. Okay, what does the police pistol use? It uses 357 mag, bonus critical damage. So we will hotkey that over there as our secondary weapon. We'll go ahead and switch to that. Oh, we have a terminal here. Sinclair visit. Sinclair did the rounds again today. Glad he left his ghostly entourage at the casino. Those walking light shows makes me wonder why he's even got us on staff when they could blast us in a second. Otherwise, Sinclair runs a tight ship. Good to see in these days and times. Don't know how smart he is trying to make a resort to escape everything in the outside world, but rich guys can make it happen. Even ones that we've even ones that have been hit hard like Sinclair has. Holding cell. Nothing much to report. Pretty quiet tonight, even from Puesta del Sol. Imagine Morris up in the casino probably has more than enough with the guests coming in tonight. Poor bastard. Set up the radio so I can listen in on the gala event when it fires up and left one out for the prisoners. If Sinclair doesn't want us to be too strict with the guests tonight, I may just toss the key in the holding cage without with anyone we pick up and let them unlock the door when they sleep it off. Communication. Set up the radio room downstairs to broadcast through the speakers. Don't want to miss tonight's performance. The receiver down there is stronger than the desk radios we have up here. Stash some supplies from the evidence room down there to celebrate once my shift is over. Way I figure it, the rest of the guards will be too busy to check up on me. So that sounds like we can turn the radios off downstairs and also... Um, yeah, I know, bud. Also, we can find uh, some supplies down there, too. So, yeah, every time we get to a radio... Whoa, it gets faster? Oh, okay. I thought it was as you got closer. Well, there's a radio right there. We won't shoot it if we can actually go downstairs and uh, do it that way. We won't waste the ammo. We need everything that we can get. So basically what we need to do is find a way to get downstairs. We have another Dean's secret stash here, which obviously is giving us quite a lot of stuff. We'll take the knife too. The stim packs. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, Dean. Okay, two out of 15. Um, all righty. So yeah, man, I'm actually excited to play this. I, I remember, uh, like I said, I really did not like this game or this DLC when it first came out because I was I was scared of basically everything. Ooh, that is an upgrade right there. Uh, Sierra Madre helmet DT4. We don't even have a helmet, so that's just a flat upgrade. Another police pistol, so we can obviously repair that. We have a locked average. How many bobby pins? Oh, we have ten. Sweet from Dean's uh, stashes. Uh, C4 plastic explosive and a detonator. Not bad. We have another terminal here. Inventory. Got the weapons and the mines in today, along with the shotguns and the ammo. Enough to defend the villa if trouble breaks out. Sinclair's taking the world situation seriously, even all the way out here. Maybe more so because we're out here. Hate to think if someone got their hands on half the stuff we have stored here. Enough military ordnance here to turn the villa into a minefield. Well, spoiler alert, we're going get to get our hands on that. Uh, dispenser report. Dispensers are up and running. Unlike most everything else, we've had a few problems with them. I heard they've been part of some World's Fair exhibit Sinclair had seen, so he'd contact the, the researchers about the dispensers to see if he could use them here. Turns out dispensers do more than supply convenience items. If there's an emergency or, or the threat of communist attack, codes can unlock ammo and repair kits for the dispensers. Stored backups of the codes in the contraband room just in case. Interesting. So we can find the contraband room. I guess we might as well get these reading glasses, right? Because they... Oh, this doesn't do anything. Some of the glasses give us perception, or maybe I'm just confusing that with the uh, well-read perk, or whatever it's called. Oh, glad I looked there. Yeah, we found some Sierra Madre armor, which, of course, is better than just a dumb jumpsuit. Okay, yeah, so we're trying to find a downstairs section. Uh, let's see what's in here. Metal box, jar of cloud residue. I think you need to do something with that. I don't remember, but we'll store them. They only weigh point one of a pound. We've got some 357 Magnum rounds. So yeah, we're getting a lot of ammo for this pistol here. We have a tool cabinet with just scrap metal. We have a door and still no leading down to the basement. So we will continue on. Now we need to shoot this radio here. I was gonna say, is my Pip-Boy light on? Okay, yeah, we cannot afford to miss our shots. That's going to suck. All right, we have another terminal. Police chief's terminal locked hard. Well, fortunately for that, we have 100 science. So again, one, two, 
three. And then we find some syntaxy, and we're looking for allowance replenish in the bottom uh, right there. Uh, when you have two stacked up like this, you want to do the smaller one first, and then you want to do the bigger one. And there we go, allowance re uh, replenish. So we should be able to do this no matter what. Boom. Sweet. So that's how you do that without having to reset constantly. Okay, security network. Disengage contraband room lock. Yes, please. Prohibited item. Sinclair's prohib prohibition list is going to be difficult to enforce and told him so. He claims we're getting an automated system that would confiscate items even the slightest bit radioactive or forward and ship them back to the visitor's source address. Asked about the items already in the villa, didn't mention the construction crew, and he dismissed it. Of course, no sooner than Sinclair gives his prohibition speech, his pal swings by the same hour asking how hard-nosed we were going to be. Told me he couldn't guarantee he could keep me supplied if I didn't treat his friends with the same respect. Prick. Security system installation. Sinclair installed a new security system for visitors coming into and out of the villa. He doesn't seem to care too much about what they do when they're inside. Only that we confiscate any personal items that could be dangerous or foreign. And make sure we know who enters and who leaves. Asked him again about watching the construction crews. He said that was a villa matter. Great, that means the prick runs the show. As long as there were no more accidents among the crews, that's what he cared about. Barely tucked my flask under the desk before he showed up. He gets that disapproving look when he sees the hard stuff. I.E. liquor. Duh. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. We got some liquor down there. Uh, nice little detail. They actually did provide that. Got a door here. Is this the contraband room? We got a metal box. Sierra Madre chips. Uh, let's see. Some scotch and stuff. We've got a grenade box. Don't mind if I do. Thank you very much. Buff out. Some super stim packs. A vending machine code 357 magnum rounds. Man. They are pushing that 357 magnum stuff hard, aren't they? Some more buff out. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a contraband room. Mentats, which will take uh, some whiskey. Don't mind if I do. 308 rounds. An automatic rifle. Damn, son. And a metal box with nothing inside. Okay, uh, was hoping for a little bit more in the contraband room, to be honest. But that's fine with me. Did we search the desk? We did. All right. Uh, let's see. We have another radio this here. Dog hurt self. I legitimately can't even... Uh, we need to keep saving because, yeah, if something bad happens, we're going to have to reset. Okay, let's see. Um, God, where's the radio at? Oh, down there. Okay, I just saw it. Whew. All right, let's shoot that. Again, can't waste this ammo. There we go. We want to see that nice big explosion. All right, we're exploring a little too much, and we're getting not a lot done in this episode. So we're going to move at a little bit more of a brisk pace, I think. True police stories. I do like exploring just because there's so many little things here, obviously. And stuff that we're just going to need because they take everything away from you, obviously, at the start. Door to villa locked very easy. Uh, we don't want to go down there just yet, obviously. We need to find uh, the stairs leading downwards. Another freaking radio. Okay, there we go. Yeah, each one of these is using a shot, unfortunately. But as the thing said, if we can get down to the bottom, we should be able to find something to disable everything. Knew you would come below the cage, down to where I am. Maybe you saw the letters I scratched on the villa walls. A little farther. Follow my voice. That's it. The one in the cage? Dog. I had to lock him up. He keeps disobeying me. So that would be the super mutant up above. Now we need to interact with this terminal immediately. Vending machine installation. I think we already did the... Oversaw the street side vending machines installation today. All working mostly because the casino crew was running the show. Finally complained to the chief about the machines. They feel like a company store. We only get a few casino chips with a paycheck, so we can barely buy anything. Chief says he's not sure the chips were Sinclair's idea. Only if we had any problems with the machines, let him know immediately. Search and seizure. After another discussion with Puesta del Sol, crew told Chief it'd be difficult to enforce the prohibition list, let alone the searches. Chief had the gala on his brain, said Sinclair put construction in the villa more important than patting down the construction crews for liquor and chems as long as they didn't hurt anyone or each other. Got a little hot under the collar. Chief did too, told me to walk it off. This whole thing stinks. Chief's barely got time for me. Now Sinclair's turning a blind eye to things in the villa because his friend's running the show. No more parking tickets. One good thing about this assist assignment no more riding parking tickets. Sinclair's laid out the street so narrow. Cars can't even come into the villa. Resources 
being what they are, he may not want folks to waste gas coming here. Cuts down on traffic noise, too. Chief says it's more than that. Says Sinclair's wanted the villa to be reclusive. Long as I don't have to worry about double parking snobs or chrysalis gas hogs clogging the villa, I could care less. Wonder how he expects folks to get here, though. Seems extreme even for privacy. Well, as they mentioned, everything's kind of automated. Now, where the hell is this radio? Again, we're going to make a save. I don't... I didn't memorize where these radios were, so I really don't want to just explode. Uh, because you will just insta-die, so we kind of have to run through. Is it like... Yeah, so we see, we kind of have to, like, run through the little locations here. Uh, to make sure we don't explode. Okay, we have a tool cabinet. Not too much, it looks like. Lots and lots of scrap metal and stuff. Let's go this way first, which I think we're going to get into the range of that radio. Okay, lots and lots of metal doors. Aha! So we'll go ahead and destroy this one, I suppose. There's a little bit of weapons way. We don't have good da uh, gun That's damage. Me there on the table, the disc. My voice can't take any chances, though. You may be some victim who simply stumbled down here. If so, can't let you let dog out. No, not yet. If you're who I think you are. You came to fetch Dog. Use him to drag others here. Now I'll use you. And that Pip-Boy you're wearing. You're smart. Clever. The key to Dog's cage is simple. Take my voice to the cage above. Let me speak to the beast inside. Then you and I... We can talk. Okay. I already know the uh, name for this <laughs> for this episode, and it's going to be cringy and dumb. Play the basement audio log on your pit boy near dog cell, which we will do. I think there was one door we missed, and it was this one. Yeah, no way to shut off the radios, unfortunately. I guess I was reading into that wrong. Uh, we have a vacuum cleaner. Wonderful. Okay, so that command tape is going to do something with that super mutant that we saw up above. Uh, which is quite interesting. I like this character a lot. Um, very, very interesting. This game is just so good. I mean, honestly, in all respects, I think it might just be better than Fallout 3. Um, I don't know. I always thought Fallout 3 was better. I promise, Master. Just keep him away. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a save just so we're smart here. And then, if we go into our hollow or into our thing, uh, whatever you want to call it, we should. So there we go. So we have Nellis Solar Ray, loyal one of the Boomer Elders, requested that I take a look at the Solar Ray to see about fixing them. Prisoner commands. What the hell is that? When the hell did we get this? I don't even know what that is. Oh, this is a thing for Elijah, I think. Are you listening? From now on, Dog wants out. When I talk to you, Dog is pay hungry. Attention. I've left markers on your pip boy. Find the three other callers in town. Eight, twelve, and fourteen. Get them to the fountain. Obey me, and you can all go free. Okay, that was weird. I don't know why Dog talked to us. Yeah, so that was Elijah. That You just get that when you start, I guess. Vending machine code steady, and vending machine code 357 rounds. And here we have the Dog command tape. So we're going to go ahead and play that. Dog, back in the cage. What have we here? You weren't who I was expecting. I'm disappointed. Still, even if you aren't my intended guest, you take direction. Good. You can't have been an idiot to figure out how to release me from my cage. Or perhaps you are, with that leash on your arm and the one around your neck. With our collars and manacles, why, we may as well be kin. Nightkin? <laughs> Who locked you in that cage? <laughs> locked myself in. Could feel myself letting go. Dogs howling, getting louder. It happens when he's hungry and no one's around to tell him no. I've been trapped in here for some time. Then you come along and let me out. So... You opened my cage for a reason. Now, I want to know why. We have a science check, interestingly enough. In super mutants, brain damage is usually the result of prolonged stealth boy usage. That's the easy explanation. The one humans use. 
pre-war technology, as if it's the cause of all ills, mind and body. I needed to come out of the cage to protect Dog from clever humans like you. Do you see these wounds of his covering his skin? The bear trap on his arm? He placed his own hand in it. The name he carved in his chest? To remind him of who he is, he inflicts pain on himself to silence me when all I try to do... <sighs> he cuts, hurts, and tries to murder me out of him. He won't succeed. Just makes me angrier. Dog is the beast. We simply change cages. Like the ones here. So, who we have here is God, as you can see in the, in the top right. And I guess what this is, I think the correct term these days is disassociative identity disorder, right? So he's got basically two identities, God and Dog. Um, it's a little cheesy, but I actually really like that idea. So basically, we've got the really intelligent God here, but we also have Dog, who is loyal and obedient, as Father Elijah said. And if I remember right, the main idea here is, like, you can kind of choose who you want to align with. Um, which is interesting, and we'll see what we decide to do. I'm not entirely sure at the time of this recording. I was looking for someone with a collar like mine. Where's your collar? It's close. Closer than I'd like. Dog's been into things. Needs to think before he eats. Chew before he swallows. He's... eager that way. Now the collar's a part of me, inside. I can feel its electronic heartbeat clicking and burning down below, like before. It was cold and heavy before going in the cage. Now you're here, and it's pulling and kicking again, tugging like a leash. Interesting. If that collar inside you was active, I didn't switch it on. Really? Yet it led you here, to me. And now you're here, and it's burning a hole in my guts. Maybe it's crying for its owner. I need to get you out of there. No. No, I don't think so. Even in here, I have more control than you do. I'm not leaving until the one who controls the collars shows. Not his voice, not his hand, not his lackey. Him. And when he comes to see me, we'll settle things. So go on. Go back to your master. Tell him I'm waiting for him. Dog may follow him. I won't. If you don't come with me, he'll set off our collars. Yours and mine. Then I still win. I'd rather die in this cell than have Dog follow him any longer. Follow his orders, his commands, desperate for recognition. The old man, he has the need to hold on to the past, to the madre. I'd rather be free, let go of this shell, than have it cage me any longer. What if we go after the old man together? No. I don't trust you. Even if you're not working with him, you'll fall into the same trap he did. You may think you can take your revenge. That'll change. You'll start thinking there's a way to have it all. I want my freedom too. You think I like having this collar on me? They all wanted their freedom at first. Then, they realized they could get inside the Sierra Madre. After that, their freedom wasn't important anymore. They couldn't let go, just like the old man. So you say you want your freedom? No. Even if you feel that way, it won't last. You'll forget, get greed blind, and you'll turn. I like to think I really wouldn't do that in real life. I think I would just want to get the hell out of here, and I would not want to risk anything more than that. 
So we can tell him that Dog might uh, be willing to obey. I'm not sure if that's the only way, though, so forget it. I had other questions. Of course you do. And so do I. You wouldn't have locked yourself in there without some sort of key to let you out. The key? Why, it's the old man. The one who brought us here. I hid the key on me so Dog wouldn't know. I just need the old man to show up so he and I can... talk. If Dog was in control when the old man appeared, well, he would just do whatever he commanded, as always. And I can't have that. These radios, you were you, you eh, these radios, were you using them for signal interference? They were here when I arrived. So I made use of them, in a manner of speaking. More their voices, really. These collars, they don't just track us. You can eavesdrop on them as well. Tune to a frequency, and you can hear everything someone is saying. So perhaps it's a good thing that Dog swallowed his collar. Anyone listening would find it difficult to hear past the digestion. Okay, unfortunately we don't have enough intelligence or perception here. Why did you lock yourself in the cage? No, why did I lock him in the cage? I locked him in because I could feel him getting hungry again. There wasn't much time. If Dog roams, he gets into trouble. Eats things he shouldn't. Listens to others he shouldn't. So he's safer in here. We're safer in here. I hoped if I locked him in here, the one he obeys would come for him. Instead, I get you. If you weren't expecting me, who are you waiting for? Don't play stupid. I already have to mind one child. You must have figured it out by now. The old man obsessed with the Sierra Madre, riddled with greed. Hoped you might be him when I woke up. All you are is his hand. You're the same kind of greed. Followed the radio, the broadcast, and now you're here, all confused. Not for long. You'll figure it out. This old man, what do you know about him? Elijah. Human. Weak like all of you are. Feeling age circling him like starved dogs, howling for blood. To me, he reeks of age and failure. And madness. To me, he is simply the old man. To Dog, he is Master. His name, meaningless. Running out of years, hopes and dreams running through his withered hands like sand from the big empty, and scorched by the sun. Okay, we need to, uh, let's see, yeah, there's tons and tons of dialogue, but we need to keep this DLC moving. Um, let's do... The key's in there with you, and Dog. <laughs> yes, but Dog doesn't know that. We don't share everything. Sometimes it's a blessing. Sometimes it causes difficulties. Now I think it's a blessing. It keeps you on that side of the cage. Now, you go fetch. Find your master. Bring him here so we can talk. Something tells me I could walk Dog through unlocking a door. Yes, you could. And once he was out, all starving and hungry, what do you think he would do then? Be careful what cage you open, because he won't go back in it without a fight. He'll tear you apart. He won't care if it kills you both. If he hears the old man's voice, he'll do what the old man says. Dog... obeys, yes. Why? Do you have some means of contacting the old man? 
The old man's voice is on my pit boy just like yours. You... don't play it. If you do, I'll find a way to get out of the cage. End you. I'll murder you, crush your arms and legs until... Calm down. Follow me willingly and I won't do it. No, you wouldn't. If you did, you won't escape this place alive. I'd shatter every one of your limbs to splinters and leave you here. You think I'm afraid of your collar exploding, killing us? No. I'll leave you breathing, then keep walking until my collar goes cold. I'll prop your broken body in view of the Sierra Madre, so you can see what you came to steal. Forever out of reach as you die. I tire of this conversation, God. I just literally... <laughs> Come on, man. I'm trying to work with you here. Okay, we can just let Dog out of his cage and make this all super duper easy, but I'm trying to give God the option to do it of his own free will. I can't convince you I'm not here for the Sierra Madre or the old man, so I'll prove it. Prove it? How? Words are worthless. Oh, what the hell is this? Alright, well, it's forcing me to do this now. Oh, no, here we go. I have the power to let Dog out of his cage. I'm gonna prove it by not doing it. Hmm. No. No, you're not. Even though Dog's more docile, easier to control. You may regret this. This place. This place is where creatures like Dog can survive. The people that fill its streets. He is as vicious more vicious than them. His hunger can help you more than I can. When I am in control, this shell is difficult to fight in. Right, but I've never done it this way, actually. I've always used Dog, I think, because um, you uh, he always rubbed me the wrong way, but this is a really interesting route to go. Even if Dog is more helpful, we can manage. <laughs> I am not sure you belong here. No, you don't belong here. Yet, you came this far. And I'm not interested in remaining here any longer. I'll unlock the cage. All right, let's get out of here. Very well. Lead on. Hey, would you look at that? Yeah, I don't think I've ever done it by using God, because I, I think I've always thought I had to use dog um so basically what happens if you don't do it this route you can just play the voice and like get dog and I, I think dog is actually really good first of all he's a very likable character and second of all um he will like eat the bodies i think uh when you kill the ghost men so they're just removed uh and that's really really helpful i don't think i even know what god does God has given you the In My Footsteps perk. This perk grants you a bonus to stealth as well as the ability to step lightly around place trap. Okay, I think dogs is far better than that, but I will take it. Um, so there we go. That quest has been completed. Wish I had a stealth boy instead of this bear trap. And now we get uh, da or, well, God as a companion. Um, we're going to go ahead and complete the police station just because that was a whole lot of dialogue. If it's any consolation, though, I think God slash Dog's dialogue is the most numerous out of all the companions. God helps those who help them selves. Okay, yeah, you can see, like, everything's written kind of a little bit backwards, and that's because, obviously, Dog is God backwards, and, you know, the whole it's duality, really and yada, yada, yada. Couldn't leave. Hey, relax, dude. Hey, we're in this together, okay? Can you can you cease with the with the vitriol? I'm just let's just help each other. Let's get out of come on, man. That was silly. Let's just help each other. Let's get out of here alive. And you know, we can all go home to our respective lives. How about that? Okay, what do we have in here? La Fantoma, which is a stealth bonus, I think. We got some binox. Uh, we've got some 20 gauge rounds. Nice. Sorry I said binox, by the way. That's not who I want to be. Uh, we've got some Sierra Madre chips there. Looks like this is the only interactable thing. Uh, let's see. And this is the final jail cell, of which we've got some stored alcohol, which is interesting. And I think that's it. Uh, you know what? We'll take the absinthe. Why not? Uh, so, yeah, we need to keep an eye out. Ooh. Vending machine code weapon repair kit. Nice. Barely spotted that. 
Okay, so I know we're going through lots and lots of dialogue in these past couple episodes. As always, you know, I don't mind the dialogue. In fact, I find it really well written in this game, as I keep saying. Um, but, you know, there's it gets to be a, a, it gets to be tricky because, on one hand, I want to listen to everything. But on the other hand, you know, my recording schedule is pretty tight. And I want to make sure we have a good balance of gameplay and dialogue. So I'm trying my best, folks. Some episodes are just going to have more than others. That's just the way that it's going to be. You know, um, but I will try to do basically as much dialogue as I think is good. You know, we don't have to get every little piece because especially if you're going to play this yourself, you know, you can listen to the stuff that I didn't listen to. Um, but I want to get, you know, as much dialogue as I think is, is a good amount. So hopefully that sits well with you. Either way, every time I talk about dialogue, though, everybody always says, you know, um, oh, I don't mind it at all. I, I just like it. Oh, God, we caught a couple of ghost men here. Uh, you take care of that one. Obviously, my gun skill is terrible. Oh, wait, can't you? Okay, we're going to try something here before we end this episode. God, our energy. Okay, that damage is sad. Just flat out sad. So, check this out. We knock them down, right? Now, oh, no, 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 no. If we go to the cosmic knife and we slash at them, I think that wipes them out completely. Yeah, I think you want to whack them until they explode, and then you don't have to deal with the ghost men anymore, because how would that even work? Like, how, how would their models get up and walk around with no heads or legs or anything like that? So I forgot about that. That's what we want to do. I think we want to, when we knock down a, a ghost, we want to uh, attack them. So for this character that we're playing, it would have been better to um, use dog, I think, because um, the stealth bonus really isn't going to do much. In fact, let's take a look at it. Uh, we need perks, and we need in my footsteps. Yeah, it's not going to tell us exactly how much. Step lightly around place traps. So that means, like, we won't activate the place traps, I guess. Um, that's intri- Oh, my God. We only have six shots left of that already? Jeez. All right, yeah, this is going to be tough. Anyways, we're going to end this episode here, ladies and gents. That is one companion down out of three. I think you can only have one at a time, but all of them are necessary to move on. Uh, like I said, I really have a newfound appreciation for this DLC, and I think I'm going to like this as one of the best. I don't think it's going to be my favorite, but it might just be my second favorite. So, um, yeah, I'll try to get more gameplay in, as I always say. Try to get a good balance going. But thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much to the patrons. And if you want to support me, if you're thinking, GV, I really like your stuff, and I'd like to support you a little bit more, well, check out the Patreon link in the description. It really does help, and you get your name in the credits, and get other stuff, too, like nice pet pictures and things. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me, GV. If you want to watch more of my content, I also stream on Twitch. The current schedule and link is below. And if you want to support me in what I do, Patreon is the best way. You get some perks. The link is also in the description below. Thank you so much for watching what I do, and I will see you next time.